Dad. Just had a heart attack. Did you have a chance to look at the drilling plan I left you? If I had a look at it, yes. Was it clear? I can't see it'll make any difference. They're working flat out as it is. I'd like it implemented before the week's out. Any news about the chief mechanic's job yet? Yeah, they're going to interview. How long is Lars going to be around for? Don't push it, Tess. If I was a man, I'd already be in the job. But no, I've got to go for a pissing interview. Not necessarily. I haven't been a shortlist yet. Is he ready? Terry, I've never seen such a natural. Sure. His boom lever, your main motor, and your load alarm. It's got there. When can you use it? Before each lift. You take the strain and you check the weight. Oh, shit! Well, what have I done now? You lied to the investigators. Told them the boom was at 45 degrees. Well, it was most of the time. How did we drop 15 tons on the deck? No, oh, all right, it dropped to 30 degrees. I panicked, so what? Keep panicking. Never heard of trigonometry. Well, maths. The mathematics of angles. They can work out the angle of the boom from the position of the container on the deck. Oh, shit. How did it go? Good luck with the interview. Ooh. Yeah, good luck. What about the drilling plan? What about it? Well, in, in the light of the accident, shouldn't we suspend it? Or at least extend the deadline? I hope you're not suggesting the drilling plan had anything to do with the accident. No, no, of course not. I just... Then the drilling plan stands. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to see the investigation officer. It wasn't your fault, but you keep lying about it. You might just persuade them otherwise. I'll just go and tell them it was a mistake. Too late. Why? I've already backed you up. throw us to the lions. Oh, you don't know that, Terry. These days he's assessing safety as much as we are. Probably worried. Aye. Worried about his bloody drilling plan. Well, that as well. So am I. If we miss the target, we're all beached. Listen, Tom. This is between me and you. Not a word to the lads. Their job's in the line as well, you know. I think things are bad enough as they are. If this gets out on the drill floor, they'll go crazy. And we'll end up having another accident. Maybe. What are you going to tell Archon Village? Only what they need to know.
Brennan. Oh, great. Aye, come in. It's up here. Thanks. You took your time. You can see it's still full of water and it won't drain or spin or anything. Mm, yeah. This will be blocked. Was that bad? No, it shouldn't be too difficult to sort out. Well, that's something. This is very nice. Do you want a tea or a coffee or something? Yeah, grand. Yeah. Uh, is this going to take long? Right. Taking a look. Who are you? I'm Jimmy. You're not the plumber? No. I'm the brother-in-law. How are you? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Can you come with Right. They've decided on a full-scale inquiry. We've got a report in for the third degree as soon as we hit the beach. My oh, Jesus. I can't go. Village. I've got to get home, Terry. This is a formal investigation. Yeah, his dad's waiting for a heart operation, Terry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Village. How's he doing, sir? It's all right, I think. I won't know till I get there, will I? Look, it'll take a day. Two days at the outside. Then you're straight on a plane, right? It wasn't your fault, Terry. Of course it was. He wasn't ready, Arch. Mama, it's solo an investigation. Look, Mum, I have to go. Yeah, ciao, ciao, Mama. Oi, don't forget that 20 quid, you me. What 20 quid? You're walking along. You're at a party. How are you, hon? Chris, your brother's here. What brother? Jimmy. So he is family. Just when I was getting in the mood to have him arrested. Where is he now? He's in the kitchen with his luggage. Oh, shit. <laughs> Chris, is there something I should know about here? Put him in the spare room, will you? And, uh, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, OK. Bye. So tell me all about what Chris was like when you were wee. Well, there's ten years between us, you know. When I was a kid, Chris was always working, labouring around the building sites and that, you know. Hey, Duncan. Oh, hey. He was always looking out for us, I suppose. Me, most of all. We hadn't seen him for years. We fell out. Must have been serious. Still is. So eventually they realised I was from more or less the same planet as them, and that I knew what to do with the ship. Mm. <laughs> but you don't have a great amount of offshore experience, do you? Only the Osprey. If I was applying for a platform, you'd have a point. But I know the Osprey. I know the Osprey better than any other candidate here. Yes, I'm sure you do. If there's nothing more you wish to ask me. No, no. Thanks very much. How'd you get on? Mr. MacDonald, Mr. Bedwin will see you now. Two hundred and fourteen days. Two hundred and fourteen. And what happened on the two hundred and fifteenth day? Some welds break might have screwed up our safety bonus. Yeah, all right, all right. No, man, it's not all right. One hundred pounds is not all right. Okay. You boys got somewhere to go. Alright, so. Are you giving you a hard time? Nah, nothing compared to my mum. Now she thinks I'm going to spend the rest of my life in jail. Well, mum's worry. A bit like OIMs. Yeah, listen. I didn't realise I was going to be putting Archie's job on the line, let alone Terry's. Oh, you worry about you. 
They can look out for themselves. Yeah, but Tom, it was my fault. I should take the blame. No, they won't thank you for it. You go before an inquiry. Tell them it was your fault. What's that saying? Saying that Terry and Archie weren't doing their job. Left the trainee in charge. How does that sound? Well, too good, I suppose. Well, this is a complete waste of time. How do you mean? It's a complete stitch-up. They've got the new mechanic. This is just for show. Oh, I don't think so. I had a word with a mate of mine in personnel. Must have already gone to some Swede. Hi, I'm Lars Johansson. I'm here for the interview. Take a seat, please. Thank you. Hi. At least if I get beached, I can go home and run the family restaurant for my dad. The village, you worked hard to get offshore. Don't throw it all away unless you have to. Yeah, well, who says I've got any choice? You've always got choices. It's just recognizing them. That's the hard bit, believe me. Anyway, you'll get the company's top safety man working in your defense, boy. Oh, really? Who's that, then? One more crack like that, and I'll away and pitch for the other side. Yeah, cheeky bugger, you. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I'm horny. I suppose Mandy's meeting you at the airport, is she? So, didn't know you had a girlfriend, Kevin? Oh, aye. Randy Mandy. She's absolutely gorgeous. She won first prize at Gruff's last year. <laughs> you know all about dogs, don't you, David? That's right, man. Riff, riff, riff. Hey, good luck, man, at the inquiry. We're all rooting for you. Cheers. That goes for me, too. And listen, if you get away with it, drinks are on him. <laughs> oh, you wish? Do you realise that you're the first of Chris's family we've met? Well, there's plenty more of us out there. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you know, Chris, he's not very good at keeping in touch. Hi, oh, oh, we're in here, Kath. Oh, hi. hi. Hey, Kath, this is Jimmy, Chris's brother. Jimmy? Kath, how are you? All right. Did you get my message about Archie's best suit for the inquiry? You mean his only suit? It's hanging up behind his door. And look, uh, I'll look at something for Village. Can you manage that as well? Yes, yeah, sure. See you later. It's one of uh, Tom's jackets. The only thing I could find in Village's room was that fringy thing. What do you think? I could be fine. It's an inquiry, not a tea dance. Typical roughnecks. Only presentable at funerals and sackings. <laughs> This one's yours, Village. It's one of Thomas when he was chairman of the Royal Yacht Club. I'm all right like this, aren't I? Put it on. Let us know how you get on. Tried looking in the toilets. I think she's been held up, Davy. Oh, I am sure she has. Sure she has. You come for a drink in the ankle, then? I'm going home. I'll see you down there later on. All right, man. See you later. Please. For God's sake, Kevin. Shut up, Davy. She will be here, all right. All right, man. I'm sure. See you later. See you later, Davy. Be still, my heart. Stop me, anybody. 
Mother, please. What's she doing here? I couldn't stop her. Hey, Babbo, what about Dad? Oh, sta bene. You, your dad is fine. A, a spasm. Well, what the hell are you doing in Aberdeen? I come to the investigazione. Good at this. Just you don't get carried away. <laughs> Beginner's luck, experience. See, it comes with age. Women like that in a partner. Say it's a sign of wasted youth. <laughs> or a good postgraduate education. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about that, would I? <laughs> get it, drinks. You're giving evidence to the HSE? Of course. But you were there. Evidence of our company policy, Terry. But you will back us up. I'm not here to back anyone up. I'm simply here to state our safety policy. Provided you haven't done anything against it, you will be fine. Thanks, up, Bench. Sei pazzo, sei pazzo. Scemo! Tu sei pazzo. Tu sei pazzo. What's going on? Whoa. She's saying he's crazy and he's saying she's crazy. Hey, oh, mama, per favore inglese. They say you can take who you want. You've spoken to the HSE? Si, sí, si. Sí. L'ispettore. The inspector. Um, he means somebody important, somebody like a lawyer. Mama, please, leave me. I can't handle this. Come on, then. Va bene. I wait here. Here? You're early. Take it you didn't go to the pub with the others then? No, I came straight home. Get me a beer, would you, love? So, what's to do in Aberdeen? There's an airport. To me. Spare room. I really like him, you know. I suppose that's because he reminds me of you. Does he now? <laughs> well, I think he's great. Sure, Jimmy's great. Even though he has just cost us a week in Granada. What are you talking about? I booked us into that flash hotel. You know the one. The one with the gardens. Yeah, the room overlooking the fountain. Oh, Chris! What? And now we're not going? My brother's turned up. We can hardly skip the country. 
What, and I wasn't worth consulting? All right, I'll consult you. Do you want to go? Oh, it's too late. No, it's not. I can get the tickets back. Well, what about Jimmy? Jesus, why don't you tell me what it is you want? Why don't you know? Now, Mr. Granelli, I'd like to turn to the question of the boom. After the accident, you clearly stated it was 45 degrees. But that doesn't seem to correspond with the evidence, does it? In the opinion of the inquiry, the boom had to be at a 30 degree angle. Uh, maybe I was mistaken. Mistaken? What kind of crane operator, even a trainee, doesn't know the angle of his boom? Don't know. Nor do I, Mr. Granelli. Nor do I know how Mr. McGrandall happened to make the same mistake. I didn't get it. Oh, what? Do you know who did? Guess. I don't know. Who? Oh. Lars. Ouch. <gasps> didn't even know he'd applied. Didn't even have the guts to tell me he'd applied for the bloody job. Maybe he was trying to spare your feelings. <sighs> you are kidding. It's the last thing that would occur to him. <sighs> Christ. <sighs> I can't believe it. I'll tell you what. What you need is a good night out on the town. No interviews. No oil men. Just human beings. How does that sound? Mr. McGrandall, do you think it was wise to let a trainee backload at night? I had every confidence in Mr. Cronelli. This trainer who doesn't even know the angle of his boom? Hmm? Let's move on. By implication, it's clear the lifting cable must have been worn and passed its safe use. When did you last check it, Mr. McGrandall, before the backloading? I check it daily. I didn't notice anything. I see. That you didn't notice the boom was at an angle of 30 degrees? I, I don't know, sir. What kind of system of cable replacement does the Osprey operate? System? You're the OIM, Mr. Morell. Well, when Archie, Mr. McGrandall, tells me a cable is worn, we replace it right away. So, you don't have a system. Let's move on. Is it going? Have you told her? Told her what? Oh, for God's sake. Well, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry, but that was eight years ago. Now let's put an end to it. I already have. Jesus, this is crazy. Well, we didn't even hear about Heather until after you were married. It wasn't planned like that. Neither was Deirdre. Look, I don't want to get into it. You're going to keep on with this, aren't you? Well, if that's the case, I'm out of here first thing in the morning. Now, on the night of the accident, drilling had been suspended. That is correct. The OIM must have been under a lot of pressure to get some beer out on board. Of course he's under pressure. He's under pressure if he runs out of milk. So do you think it was wise to attempt backloading in those conditions? The OIM makes his own judgments. But company policy is clear. Safety is line one, rule one, word one. Even when drilling is suspended? The OIM has written instructions not to compromise safety under any circumstances. It takes precedence over me, the company, the drilling plan, you, everything. Thank you, Mr. Bergman. One more thing, Mr. Bergman. What happens if the Osprey fails to meet its 60 day drilling plan? The rig will be docked and the men will have to find alternative employment.
what target? Not now, Arch. Two pints of bitter. It's not a target anybody on the rig knows about. Because it's none of their bloody business. Oh, I see. But if in 30 days' time we don't have any oil, we don't have any jobs, will it be any of their business then? I'm the OIM. The company's always setting me targets. I've even got a target for how much paint I can use. Do you want to hear about for that? For Christ's sake, Terry! There's 80 men on that rig! That's 80 families depending on wages! And you want to sit tight until it harms? You think I'm sitting tight? I'm panicking, Arch. Believe me, I'm panicking. Maybe we want to panic too. Help yourself. But don't worry about losing your job in 30 days' time. Worry about losing your job tomorrow. Jesus. No wonder you needed that beer ain't so badly. Aye. It's all my fault, Arch. The cable, <coughs> the weather. I even got the angler to boom wrong. Sorry, Terry. Mm. We've all got something we want to sit on, haven't we? Ask Ed Vard. Aye. He didn't do you any favours in there either. Company policy is safety is paramount. Bollocks. Ed Vard's policy is you don't have any accidents. And when you do, you blame me. Cheers. I'm telling you, it's looking really bad. I see, I don't need this. I've got to prepare for the inquiry. Oh, you've got to eat anyway. Go on, just show your face. Yeah, well, as soon as the meal's over, I'm off to my work. Is everything all right, Dad? Yeah. How are you, Pat? Fine. La vita piendo di salute. Yeah, well, it's not over yet. Who cares? If they thought you were guilty, they would have kept you. They can't keep any of us in there, Mrs. Grelli. Why? Because you're innocent. Carlio. Oh, the stop it. I had a terrible day in there. They know that I've lied to them. You lied? Yes. I lied. Dear, dear. I was so worried. I thought you were telling the truth. <laughs> Jesus, Mother, you're driving me nuts. I could lose my job here. Go. Oh. And then I'd have to come back and run your stupid little restaurant for you. Se contento. Sorry, Arch. Is Wolfredo okay? He drinks too much. Sit down. So what are you doing now? I'm working in Glasgow this last three months. One of those new leisure centres going up, you know? When you thought you'd drop by any half chance. Chris, chance has got nothing to do with it. You know full well why I'm here. We've got to get this sorted out. Come on, you two. You know, Chris used to even come home for my birthday. I remember his very first job. Bought me a bike. It was the best bike in Ireland. And you know, Chris, it isn't a present unless he's paid more than he can afford for it. Hmm. Yeah, that's Chris all right. What was the job? I was labouring on a building site. You know, little brother here could have gone to college. Isn't that right, Jimmy? Really? Why didn't you go? Something else came up. I wish I had the same opportunity, eh? There you are. You know, you two should go out. Get to know each other again. I mean, there's plenty to do in Aberdeen. There's fishing, walking. And the best golfing in Europe. Isn't that right? Tom? Yeah. I thought, are you and Chris not going golfing tomorrow? We've got a farm ball with Cinders and Safex. Ah, uh, not anymore. I'll be taking up this inquiry. There we are, then. Jimmy can take Dad's place. I don't think so. Jimmy's got a plane to catch. <coughs> Is this a private party, or can anyone be miserable? What was all that stuff between you and Jimmy tonight? What stuff? You practically threw him out. 
Yeah, well, maybe I'm fed up with Jimmy Brennan being everybody's last puppy. Why? What did he do? Hmm? What's so bad that you don't want to even see each other again? That was a long time ago, Heather. Yeah, well, I want to know. What did you fight about? What did you say to each other? Jimmy said nothing. And I said, what the hell are you doing in bed with my fiancé? Your fiancé? Yeah. <sighs> you never told me you had a fiancé. What are you drinking, girls? Are you oil men? No. He's in PR. I'm here for the uh, Pram Golf Tournament. Ah, so you're from out of town then? We're looking for a good restaurant. Maybe you could recommend one. Oh, well, uh, there's Gerard's on Union Street. Oh, there's a little Thai that's just opened up around the corner. Thai sounds good. Perhaps you ladies would like to join us? Get the one. Married. Boy, you can tell by the eyes. <laughs> Which one? The golfer. Are you married? Who <laughs> dab? I could think of some who'd fall for a line like that. It's not a line, huh? You can believe him. Look at those eyes. <laughs> if you trust him so much, how come he wasn't your best man? I didn't know him there. I... tell the inquiry that I lied to them. No, you're not. I can't let Archie lose his job because of me. There's nothing you can do. Let's see what happens in the morning. We can get some sleep. Good morning, Archie. Right, you sit down there. You're not going to bed till I've seen you drink a pint of water. Go on. Have you two no good beds to go to? I'm all a bit worried about the inquiry. <laughs> so I see. Celebrating already. Come on, no hard feelings. We've got fire training tomorrow. Yes, I meant to talk to you about this. You can rely on me. <laughs> For what? If we get into trouble. It's very kind of you. It can be a very tough course. It certainly will be if you carry on drinking like that. <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to it. Right, you're clear about what you're doing. Let it build and go. Move forward. Aim for the center of the fire. Come on, Tessa, you're too slow. Get in there. Bring it down. Okay, lads, let's show how it's done. That's more like it. That's better. Jimmy will be away after breakfast. Why? He's just got here.
Look, is this really about something that happened eight years ago? Well, she must still matter. Deirdre. A lot. I'm more than Jimmy. Don't push it, Heather. Maybe she matters more than me. It's over. It means nothing. That's an end to it. That's not how it looks from here. Jimmy, get your arse down here. Right, I'm just going. Bollocks, you're playing golf. All right. See you, Heather. Remember that you're wearing breathing apparatus. Tighten up those head straps. Now, you're going into a dangerous situation to find that casualty, so remember that you're working as a team, all right? All right, Lars and Tessa, up you go. What the hell went off in there? I um We uh we sort of tripped over each other. Huh? Oh well, these things happen. At least you were quick off the mark. Tessa, I couldn't get work on a Norwegian rig. It was the Osprey or nothing. Well, why the bloody hell didn't you tell me? I was too intimidated. By who? By me? I'm not intimidating. To my mind, the first important factor in the accident is the weight of the container, as stated in the manifest. In this case, it was wrong, wildly inaccurate. Instead of the five tons as listed, it weighed 15 tons. These weights are drawn up on the beach. Exactly. So the rig can't be held responsible, nor the crane operator or his assistant. And this is what you were given, Mr. McGrandall? Aye, we were told the weight was five tons. I'm baffled, Mr. Grinelli. If you were trying to lift 15 tons with a boom at an angle of 30 degrees, then the load alarm should have gone off. That's what it's there for. But Archie always taught me to test the strain first, but we had nothing. The load alarm didn't ring inside the cab or outside on deck. And who is responsible for the load alarm? Uh, the load alarm was calibrated for the rig by an onshore company, C. McLachlan and Son. This should tell you when you're reaching the maximum safe load on a particular angle on the boom. In this case, it didn't. 
Did he use the wood? Yeah, well, there's plenty in the bag, so. I hooked it, you know. Because I was a little bit worried about the fade and the follow through. I'm losing my grip. Well, on reality. Hands. What'd you do that? The building site? I did it this morning, making sandwiches. Ah, well, fair play then, Chris. You see, for some of us, that's classed as an industrial injury. Give the lads a break. While we're waiting for the decision, maybe I could buy you a drink. Hmm? You must be bloody joking. I wouldn't drink with you if you let me push in your lager. Inquiry's not reached a formal verdict yet. I don't know you. What did they say? He's lost his job. If you're a college boy, how come you're navying? I had a place, but I never went. You walked out on university? Your parents must have been well pleased. If you showed my family a mortar board, they'd make cement on it. I asked me da for an encyclopedia once. The old bastard told me to walk to school like everybody else. <laughs> Is that five strokes or six? It's seven. But the hole's over that way, lads. Oi, our mum's slave for your education. It was my choice, not yours. You're a quitter, Jimmy. Listen, lads, thanks for the game. You don't know how he let me mother down. We all let our mothers down, Chris. We don't have to let ourselves down as well. Get after him, lad. He's your brother. Oh, no. What? What happened? We got off. <laughs> oh, you stopped me, man. You bugger. No thanks to Edward. Here's our man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> drinks all round, Stephen, please. Drinks all round. Will's crutch got to. He just walked off. In the middle of a game, he was in the right bloody mood. Cheers, everyone. Well done. Cheers. Me, dears. Which do you think upset our man more? The fact that I'm not some college professor in the sticks. Or that you and I haven't said a good word to each other in eight years. I know. It was a terrible thing to do, whatever way you look at it. Mind you, it didn't seem so bad at the time. I could tell. You were never going to make it to the altar with Deirdre, despite her vice-like grip. She was still my fiance. And don't I know it. But if we're in for another ten years of you picking up the pieces, then just say so and I'll just piss off right now. Only from where I'm standing, you seem to have made a pretty good fist of it already. Just a lovely girl, Chris. You have a great life ahead of you, the pair of you. I know that. It wasn't Deirdre, was it? It's the old monster, rearing his ugly green snout again. I was the one who got all the breaks. And you were the one who really could have done something with him. I never said that. I never even thought it. I know, Chris. But I did. All the time. Was voice like, wasn't it? It was great. Was it ever on the dear girl as The golf was grand, eh? Oh. Where are Chris and Hannah? I have no idea, actually. <laughs> it's all all right, isn't it? That's what I like. You know. You and Jimmy. You and... And you. Yes, Heather. Everything is fine. I'm glad. 
<laughs> You've got your family back now, Chris, and you know what? What? I want to meet them all. <laughs> <laughs> No! <laughs> Stop! No, but they'll be wondering where we are. This is my birthday party. I can do what I want. <laughs> the calf won't come in. <laughs> she could try. <laughs> the bar, did you get a message? Thanks a lot, man. Good to have you. Cheers, Bob. There you go. It was great to hear the guys go off there. Not bad, eh? Yeah. Well done, Arch. Listen, sis. You've got to tell me the truth. Does Dad want me to go back and run his restaurant for him? Of course he does. It's the only thing that's keeping him going. Well, that's it, then. I'm going back. You do, and I'll wring your bloody neck. It is an art disease that's killing Dad. It's that bloody place. There's nothing left. Just Trattoria Ganelli, the rest until the end of the universe. Times are hard, eh? Hard. It's a ghost town, and ghosts don't eat pasta. Well, how much would they get for it if they sold it now? Bloody sight more than nothing, which is what they'll get in a few years' time. In a very dull, Wilfredo. God willing. You know, we sometimes manage things without you children. Incredible in love. Abba will live his life and you will live yours. It's very simple. As if you're not there to live it for me, eh? Oh, don't <laughs> I have my hands full with Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's Take me, do you remember this? <laughs> Can I get you a drink? Why, well, one in soda, please. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, Alan. I'm orange juice. Thanks, Tom, and I'm away in the morning. It's a shame. A lot more to Aberdeen than golf. Especially when the boys are home. I'll be back. You can count on us. All these years sulking over someone who you keep telling me meant nothing to you. How would you feel? What? A fortnight fiancé? Poor Jimmy. And these things mean nothing at that age. He was the same age as you. <laughs> yeah. My God, but she was a truly beautiful woman. The legs on her. Down forever. And that lisp. Lisp? Oh, I love that lisp. I love that lisp. <laughs> yes. Oh, you stop with the pain of you. My God, what you like. <laughs> In search of furniture, fittings and firearms, next on BBC One, stolen from the army, recovered by the Red Caps.